Hour two of the program, ladies and gentlemen. Tobin and Leroy here with you on 790 The Ticket, taking you up until 10 o'clock. So I've been in the, you know, Twitch chat. Okay. And there's a lot of people that seem to think Teddy Bridgewater could end up being the quarterback. And I replied, you do know Tua has a stronger arm than Teddy Bridgewater, right? Like, Teddy is not known for his strong arm. Right. And so it's funny that you will complain about certain aspects of a quarterback and get so, for reasons I can't explain, get so frustrated with him in his third year without even realizing that some of the skill set that that quarterback has, the backup quarterback doesn't have that much. I think that uh, look, there was some of this discussion when they brought in Teddy Bridgewater. Oh, he could he could beat out Tua. Was he looking for an opportunity where he could win a starting gig? Um, I think it's twofold. One, I think there will be some support of that if Tua has some struggles. One, because he's a local guy, he's beloved mm-hmm. down here. True. Um, but also, look, if Tua is struggling to beat out Teddy Bridgewater, then you got bigger bigger problems than this anyway. Agreed. Agreed. Um. I just think that at least you're what you're doing this year. If you're the dolphins is putting yourself in a position to be able to evaluate what you have or don't have. Yeah. And before with all the circumstances surrounding to it made it difficult to even evaluate what he could and couldn't do, either with the offensive line, the running game struggling, the coach playing defense against him, right? All all these things um, kind of played into it, and it's and and he wasn't terrible. Like let's not when in the phrase "what is terrible quarterback play," Tua wasn't it, right? But we want him to be so much better that we're not going to even acknowledge or give him an opportunity to grow. Well, one like he did come in with a lot of hype, like injury. Okay, or not, but that still is, doesn't is, change the process. Well, it doesn't, but it does change expectations. We see this all the time. Like what you come into the league with, it's hard to shake that. Um, he but seems you don't to have got. In, like, he seems or, to have got. Yeah, I'm saying he seems to have gotten it a lot more than other guys have because. Right. You know, like for the life, I don't understand. I don't see, you know, half the segments spent on Tua that I do on Trevor Lawrence. And Trevor right. Lawrence was as can't miss. I don't see is there pressure on Trevor Lawrence? This year? Everybody kind of just accepts the fact. Oh well, he had a disaster in Urban Meyer last year. Let's give him a pass. Where Tua actively had a coach, kind of sabotaged him. Like really did wanted somebody else right. and didn't really want the guys as quarterback. I don't see that benefit of the doubt. Give it to it. And it's not even counting the injury. Right. With like the fact you knew that he had what you were ribs. getting into when you brought him in. A hip, broken ribs, all that type of stuff. But I don't see half of those segments of Trevor Lawrence. Uh, is he the guy? Can he be the guy? Everybody just kind of accepts, well, this was his pedigree at Clemson. He was the number one overall pick. He's got the size. He's got the hair. He's got the look. He's going to be fine. Um, but I think, yeah, look, I, I, I do think it's a it, – Anybody who goes, if I go on these national shows or any of these things where they ask, oh, what do you think the Dolphins are going to do? It does rest on him. I do think about it. It's like, well, I don't really know. I think if, if he takes the leap, if everything they put around him does better, if the offensive line, you know, getting Teron Armstead and that kind of having a domino effect on everybody else, if that improves, then I think they're going to be really good. I feel like the roster looks much improved, especially with we thought that was going to be a really good wide receiver core last year, and the best guy ended up being the rookie. And the rest right. of the guys kind of were like, meh, whatever. Right. So I, I just, I just, I just think, you know, based on where we are with Tua, and it sucks that there's no football because all your evaluate anybody's evaluations of Tua at this point are unfounded. Because if you look at his percentage rate, you look at his completion rate down the field, if you look at his wins losses, I mean 
you can pretty much chalk that up to young quarterback going in the right direction. But for some reason, maybe it's a – you think it's a Bama thing? That no, because everybody are, kisses Mac Jones' ass. No, I don't think it's a right, Bama thing. Right. I don't think, that's, I, no, that's true. That's true. I don't, I don't know. I think, he I hasn't think done anything that would warrant – he didn't come into the league arrogant. He didn't come into the league cocky. He's always been very humble. And it just seems like I can't put my finger on why everybody decided – that he doesn't get the pat a uh, get a uh, pass or some patience with what we know he's been and what he's been through. I think the couple I think there's a couple of things that have hurt him in the perception thing. This is not about his career. I'm talking about national perception. Uh-huh. I think it has to do with the fact that he comes into a class where Joe Burrow has gotten to the Super Bowl already and Justin Herbert was breaking rookie passing records. Mm -hmm. So you're already kind of behind the eight ball on your class, particularly right or wrong. That's just what I think. I think adds to it. Right. Um, And I think that in a lot of ways, he had more hype than both of those guys coming into the league. So I think people have already just kind of labeled him as a bust because look where he's at compared to what he thought. Everybody thought he was going to be. And then look Mm -hmm. at the guys who got drafted with him. I mean, we can can we like. Was Matthew Stafford a bust? Because he didn't win nothing. Mm, yeah, but I'm saying, but Matthew Stafford was, you know, had years where he was leading the league in passing and things like that. Like I think that. But if Tua, if Tua wouldn't lead and, and the Matthew league Staff- in passing, and, and, and Matthew Stafford, like Tua, Tua was like literally like the first game he played became a national celebrity. Right. You know, like that. That it's a very rare air, I think, of fame that he has compared to other guys coming into the league. I mean, look, it, it, all that's true. But again, no matter how hyped or how many accolades you come into the league, at, last time I checked, that process of becoming a consistent NFL quarterback has not changed. What has hindered that process, good or bad, is sometimes based on the amount of talent or the system that you come into. For example, Tom Brady wasn't very good his first year, and they won the Super Bowl, right? Because of all the things they had around him. Yeah, but now, again, he ended up being like. But again, he's a six-round pick. Like the, you, we're talking about different stuff here, as far right, as but, like j- not. Like you're as if you're asking the question about what like why people are rats off a ship on him already compared to a guy who was unheralded being dra- that's why, but that has nothing to do with Tua. It, I mean, it does and it doesn't. Like it has to do with him because it does because he got selected that high, but it doesn't because it doesn't change the process in which some guys have to go through to develop. And then add a, a, a substantial injury to that. Like, if, and, and, and here's what's amazing you had guys like Johnny Manziel and guys like Tim Tebow who had a whole lot more questions coming into the league than Tua had as far as talent. And it didn't pan out. And, you know, one people chalk to the chalk up to the Browns, and Tim Tebow could do no wrong. I think the thing that well, I think the, the more interesting case probably recently is Baker, isn't it? Like Baker comes into the league, he was also had a level of fame, Heisman Trophy winner, number yeah. one overall pick. Mm-hmm. But the difference between Baker and Tua is Baker really welcomed people hating him, like right, and he won a playoff game. Uh, yes, uh, but like it, there, there's a there was a there was an arrogance coming into the league that Tua doesn't really exude. Um, but I think like that that thing, whatever that is, like where it's like people are either gonna love you or hate you. I think for Tua, the thing that's been frustrating about it is like I know going into this year, it's gonna be unless he lights it up right away it feels like the margin for error is going to be so small. We're going to be evaluating every throw. 
every good throw, every bad throw. Like it's not going to be a normal season because it's all going to be so right. hyper focused on the quarterback. So if they have success, but he doesn't necessarily light it up, are we going to still have a problem with that? Yeah, I mean, a lot like, of ways. We, uh, I mean, in a lot of ways, that's it's kind not about of really, winning. It's not, but it's but that's kind of what they've been around, right? Like winning records, but not really good enough. And where they say it's not good enough, oh, it's the offense. Well, yeah, the offense hasn't been good. Like, like, okay, but that that's that. There's a there's a bigger issue there. There was a lot of no running game, no offensive line, right? I no mean, real receivers outside of Waddle, right? The, Here's what's amazing about this. That old line got Tua killed. And they turned around and instead of saying he has got no help, which they would say with some guys, you know what they said about Tua? Huh, you knew the guy was injury prone. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> like, he got destroyed. Hit the idea here, Marcos. The ticket is the home of every Miami Heat game. WAXY South Miami and WSFS HD2 Miramar. An Odyssey station. The headlines are brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy a truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford, we know trucks. Stanley Cup final resumes tonight. Uh, Lightning hosts the Avalanche in game four. Colorado is up 2-1 in that series. Marlins will continue their series with the Rockies tonight. As they won yesterday, nine to eight, Koopa Loop with the go-ahead knock in the bottom of the eighth. So the Marlins will try and get things right on their home field this week after a rough road trip for the Fish. Text writes in. You guys can text show seven eight six three six zero zero seven ninety. Text writes in. Can't believe people were dumb enough to stay on the Tua ship after he broke his hip. What? That's what he says. Why are people so angry at him? He's so nice. But, but here's the here's the problem. That's not who is doing. And then the Dolphins determined that they could still make that move. But if that is still an issue, that's not Tua's fault. When you say not an issue, you mean like people still believing in him or not believing because or, of the injury? Or people not understanding what he had to go through to come back from that injury. And maybe the first year he wasn't all the way back because as we've seen the last couple of off seasons, he's gotten a lot stronger, a lot bigger. Um, and, and he's gotten his body ready for the pounding that maybe he wasn't ready for that first year. Also, he doesn't have Jesse Davis blocking his blind side. That'll also, help. Valid point. That, that'll help. But, but, um, if we sit here and talk about the reasons why Tua wasn't successful, a lot of people take that as you're making excuses for Tua, but those are facts. Like, you can't have the worst offensive line or one of the worst offensive lines as far as protecting a quarterback and have the shortest amount of time to throw the ball and then complain about where he's throwing the ball. I just think it's all in a situation where, yeah, he's got the. I do think that this is more of a no excuse season because it is year three. It's an important year to know, like, what is his future going to be with the is franchise? It, it is, is it because it's year three or because he's in a better situation? Well, that it, that also adds to it. Like, it's this. He's got the experience of, you know, he's got the experience of. Okay, maybe wasn't fully healthy. He's got the experience of didn't have a coach who backed him. Now it's like, okay, this is all kind of set up for you here. When it got Tyree Kill for your ass, like, right. you know Jalen Waddle's good. So he's got a one-two punch there that looks really fun. He definitely has a coach that he has said, I've never had anything like this. Super positive, the reinforcement that he gets, all of that stuff. So, You know yeah. who I would trade for? Who? Kareem Hunt. Is he available? Everybody's available. What does that mean? I'm just saying, like, I I know all the running backs that they brought in are talented. But they all come in with questions. And even though you feel you have the talent at that position, um, you still don't have the confidence to know that they're going to be able to weather the storm or be able to make it for a whole stretch of a whole season. And so I would just say that, 
Look, he's the he's the Kareem Hunt's the backup. They have a young running back who's had success. So you can, if you're Cleveland, you can do without one or uh, two of the two of the uh, one of the two backs. Either I think it's Johnson, I can't think of his name, um, or Kareem Hunt. Um, and either one of those guys could back up Nick Chubb. And then you have a back who's proven who can come in and give you some stability at that position. And it probably wouldn't cost you a lot because they have the other guy. Well, Chase Edmonds, uh, their new running back who they brought in from Arizona. Um, yep. also he, been some, hurt. He, uh, he had some interesting things to say about Tua. He says, I do believe that Tua is the answer in Miami. I think Tua gets unfair judgment. I mean, that's how it is when you play quarterback. I think that he gets put in some unfair situations the last two years. Mike McDaniel is somebody who is competent, someone who's going to put a good offensive scheme. We got weapons around him this year. It's going to be a lot easier. And I'm going to say you'll see the Alabama version of Tua. So people will remember that. I think he just put was put in unfair situations the last two years. I agree, but but most people don't look at it that way. No, definitely not. Right? Yeah, because I mean people are looking at it and getting offended that Tyree Kill uh, says he's more accurate than Patrick Mahomes. Which you know? Just because you're more accurate doesn't mean you're better. How about David Carr? He was very accurate. Well, I don't. Passes with two yards. Yeah, I don't really want that comparison out there, man. I don't want to put David Carr out there. Like that. Sometimes you got to look at. Why would you do that? Because sometimes you got to look at everything surrounding a player and not just pick certain aspects of it to make your case. Another text writes in. He says, uh, Joe Burrow made it to the Super Bowl with a terrible offensive line, Leroy. Don't want to hear your season of excuses. Okay. Also had very had decent running backs and great weapons. The wep- Great weapons. Great, great weapons. weapons. So, uh, like, yeah, like, okay. And, and you also, believe it or not, had a couple of guys who would catch five-yard passes and go 70. Another guy says, all this stuff is just lipstick on a pig. I don't understand how people could be pig. so rats off a ship with Tua beauty, without acknowledging song. the circumstance in which he was asked to play. Plus, he loves Christmas. You know, so sweet. Nice guy. I don't think people Daddy loves you guys. That doesn't help, dude. Nah, that doesn't it help. Helps. I, I, you know. You wouldn't want to go to his house for Christmas? Imagine the carols. I love Christmas. You think they have be a Christmas? playbook ready? There'll be a it'll be a downhole Christmas, so they'll pull out the ukulele and start singing Christmas songs. I kind of feel like that is what it's like at two is because I do see him on social media all the time with that ukulele. Like, who was the last guy who put that? Was it Raekwon Davis? What the hell was he singing? He was singing like, was it Let It Be? I was just lost in his eyes. He was he was singing something beautiful pretty recently, and I'm like, wow, two just got the ukulele out. You know. Ukulele, one of those words. I'm not really sure. Think you should reach into that closet and pull out a playbook more often than he pulls out the ukulele. Maybe he does both. They do. Remember, they have barbecues together. Yeah, they have barbecue playbooks. You know, playbook, playbook Tuesdays at Tua's. Yeah. You know, have some shish kebabs. Run some plays. I do think Tua will be fine. I do. I I believe that. Um, I just get annoyed at we pick and choose which numbers or what circumstance to use to fit our case. Instead of just taking it for face value for what it is. You know, you can take all the facts, put them together, and then come up with a conclusion instead of making up stuff. Okay, for example, Tua can't throw the ball deep, right? Well, the numbers say that's not accurate, right? He's 50%, which is third or fourth in the league. So that's not the case. People say Tua doesn't have a strong arm. Well, that's not true. So I get the evaluation of Tua. What I get upset about is the fact that what they're using to make their point is not accurate. It's not. Yeah, the only thing that the only thing that is like the the injury concerns or the size of him were definitely things that people brought up. In the early going, the arm thing wasn't, but I just think we, I think we underestimated how bad the hip injury was going to affect the arm. Right. Um. You know, he's bigger than Drew Brees. 
Swoller than Drew Brees? Swoller. Swoller. Well, I would say they're about the same height. So yeah, he's like he's like six foot. So that's bigger. So we didn't have those discussions with Drew Brees when Drew Brees was going to come here, and they decided to go with Dante Culpepper. Nobody mentioned those injuries then about how small he was or whatever. It didn't bother. It, it didn't. It didn't matter. 